Good morning, folks. Let's take a look at our Earth and Sun from the ground up to the sunspots. We'll begin with an amazing eclipse video from the 20th. This fellow actually caught coronal plasma as the bright disk became occluded by the moon. A link to this video from Svalbard can be found below. Top solar story today is exactly what we warned of yesterday. That filament had destabilized early, and while it took a number of hours, it did finally release. This eruption will not significantly affect Earth. We do still have our other plasma filaments, both north and south, and they are still the top eruption threat, but their lead is waning even as the solar flares struggle to get up out of B range. That's because the sunspots are still making their comeback again for another day. Our top spots to watch are up north where an odd configuration will make any growth or morphing something to monitor, and I believe that's a solid delta candidate coming in at the limb. Just some minor spots to the north of that incoming. Meanwhile, going up a level of energy from flares, gamma ray burst came in from the Lynx constellation this morning. That's the first burst in five days. Solar wind. Three days of it here, you can see continued fluctuations to density and speed. But more importantly, the speed itself is sustaining over 500 kilometers per second with bouts above 600. That type of stream is still forceful, and Earth's magnetic shield is still struggling to fully recover. Another magnetic storm this morning. So we've got that coronal hole departing. And bottom left, you see the next one coming in. That would be the negative southern polar coronal hole with an equatorial extension reaching to pretty low latitude and carrying some significant power along with it here. You'll remember from yesterday that the coronal holes, sunspot surge, geomagnetic activity, and the positions of the planet suggested an earthquake watch should begin. Took a 6.4 in Chile a few hours ago. Hopefully not an ominous sign for this entire week. RSOE EDIS alert map. Got a radioactive product situation in Beirut, and after multiple hot shipments, the latest to hit the shores is maxi pads. Not a good place for radioactive material. Also, we have another incident of the mysterious sleeping disease in Kazakhstan. Folks, if this illness isn't some kind of hoax, it has lab manipulation and engineering written all over it. Interestingly, none of the uranium mine workers nearby have shown any symptoms. For those interested in the GMO struggle, one of the best pieces I've read in a long time came out this weekend from the Huffington Post. It is a top recommendation. Also got linked an article about how even Oprah is on the organic side and for GMO labeling, yet she still lets Monsanto advertise in her magazine. In the West today, we have minor weather warnings all over, but the next 48 hours, that central low is going to be the home to a major convergence of air masses with differing temperature, moisture, and electric potential. Central U.S. goes back on severe alerts starting tomorrow. In Europe, we've got a big low-pressure cell up north, multiple vortices in the center, and they're driving one massive convergence line. Certainly this won't be the only weather to worry about in Europe tonight, but it's definitely the most significant. Down under, we've got Cyclone Nathan still dancing up north, Cyclone Reuben trotting out well east of New Zealand, and a convergence drawn from a southern low to the southeast corner of Australia. That and the cyclones are what I'm watching today. If you didn't hear the news, we are overjoyed Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille has agreed to speak at Observing the Frontier, the first conference for the observers. Lineup's getting quite good. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.